Hello again, nice to see you. Well, what do you think I'm going to be unboxing today? I'll give you three clues. It's a domestic appliance. It's made by a company called Hoover. And it's designed for removing dust and dirt from carpets and home furnishings. Have you guessed? What? That's right. Yeah. Surprise, surprise, I'm going to be unboxing this vacuum cleaner. But not just a vacuum cleaner, this is a Hoover vacuum cleaner. Yes, Hoover, the name synonymous with cleaning. Most people nowadays, despite the fact that a certain company producing plastic bagless vacuum cleaners seems to dominate things at the moment, the tide is turning. But when you get your vacuum cleaner out, most people still call it a Hoover. Because Hoover were one of the originators of the genre of cleaning. Right, this is Hoover's flagship energy saving Eco G Upright Bagless Vac. Basically, it's a Hoover globe, but they've made it green and put Eco on it, and it's got a 900 watt motor, so it uh, is a bit less energy guzzling than many cleaners at the moment. But all that's changing too, from September. If you don't know about that yet, well you soon will. Anyway, without any further ado, let's see what's inside this box. Right then, let's tear open the box and see what delights are inside. So this is a Glow 900 watt. The model number is GLE 900 001. And the colour inside is opal white and Caribbean, and I think that's spelt right, because I didn't think Caribbean was spelt like that, but it's opal white and Caribbean green, slash Caribbean green transparent. I don't like the look of this so far. To me, this box has been opened and sealed up again. So I will not be happy if that's the case, but possibly, it will be all right on the night. So the first thing to be revealed looks all right so far, but I'm not sure. First thing to be revealed is the instruction manual. And there's the uh, European guarantee in there as well. Now, starting with the dusting tool. It's quite a new design from Hoover that. Not quite triangular, but almost triangular. And yeah, fairly soft brushes, so that's not too bad. So that's the first cleaning tool. What's here now? Ooh. Now this forms part of the multi-function tool that uh, we have. Again, that's nice and soft, actually. And this angles and pivots. Um, in all sorts of directions, so you can clean up high and clean low and things. You've also got the brush that slides off. So now you've just got your regular tool for cleaning your sofa and your mattresses and things. So that's part of the multifunctional tool. And next pretty much bog standard with most vacuums, even some of the very cheap ones, a pet hair remover finished in the translucent green. Not sure how that's going to perform until I operate it. But there we go. Well, the whole thing's coming out with the polystyrene. But, well, not quite the whole thing. And I can remove the... that's it. Here we may looks a bit grubby. Just checking, it sm all smells very new, so I don't think it's been used, it's just... Phew, it's got an odd smell about it. Mm. 
that's not quite as pictured on the Argos website, it shows it to be silver. And I'm not too keen on the fact that that is a little bit kinked. But hopefully, in time, that kink will sort of iron itself out. Might have to keep it stretched for a bit, but anyway, that's part of the hose that is designed to stretch easily up a standard flight of stairs. We shall see if it does. Out comes your mains cable. I believe this is a seven meter cable, so it's not very long really. You'd expect about eight meters minimum nowadays. 10 meters is a nice length of cable, I find. Some machines do have up to 12 meters, even some Hoover machines do. Right, there is, for some reason, a piece of cardboard here. Not really sure why that's there, but it's not there anymore. This is very, very light, I must say, but we've only got half the machine. That's mainly just your bagless container and the hose. And part of the globe twist and steer. I've never actually seen one of these in real life. Just seen pictures and videos. I don't get out much, certainly not to electrical stores, not as so much as I used to. What is next? Now it's all, the polystyrene is all smashed up in there, so I'm not happy. But it seems okay. That's another part of the multifunction tool. Nice little bit of Hoover branding on there. And I believe, yes, it's telescopic, is it? Yes. So you can use that as a crevice tool like that. And I'm sure you can connect the other part of the tool on the end. Yes, you can. So you can actually reach up a bit further. It's all bends, so you can do your tops of your cupboards and things with that. So that's part of the multifunction tool. We'll see about that later, how that works. What else is in the box? Right, the handle. And a lot of loose polystyrene. I'll have to vacuum that up. I don't know what I'm going to use. Well, that's comfortable, actually. Now, it's a metal handle, and this also forms part of the extension tube, and it has a sort of crevice nozzle on the end there. You can actually attach the hose into here, and it's got a nice little cap like that that's connected, so you shouldn't lose it. And what I quite like about this so far is this sort of rubberized hand grip. That's quite comfortable to hold. I have used some cleaners of this ilk from another manufacturer with a similar sort of looped handle but it's very uncomfortable. But that seems quite good. Seems quite comfy. And of course you've got the famous Hoover logo on the handle there. And judging by these grooves, three of them, you should be able to adjust the height of the handle. I know you can push it all the way down for storage, but it looks like there is some intermediate settings as well. Now I think the last thing that should be in the box is the main unit. So, try and get this polystyrene out. It is. That's it, come on. It's already broken, but it has come all the way from China, so it's, I don't know if it was a particularly uh, rough journey for it. It's a lot, lot lighter and smaller than I thought it would be. Right, well, so far it seems okay. Yep, it's in one piece. Never really, as I say, I haven't looked at these close up. It's unusual. Wonder why that's like that. So here's the the motor unit, the main gubbins. That's, that houses the motor and the agitator. Got your adjustable 
height control from short pile up to long pile. What do these say? Powerful multi-cyclonic, twist and steer, three-in-one multifunctional tool, and 50% energy saving. Of course, you can have vacuum cleaners that are 100% energy saving. They're the vacuum cleaners that you don't plug in and switch on. But this one, if you do use it, if you do plug it in, it is supposed to have 50% less energy consumption than some equivalent Hoover Upright. So I believe, well I know, that there is some assembly required, but fortunately I don't need any tools, it should just click together, and in fact they've supplied two sprung clips either side of the globe if you need to dismantle it for any reason. So, there's nothing else in that box. Let's assemble this machine. I hear all the main parts ready for assembly. Now I've taken the hose off, even though when I took the bag unit out, the hose was attached. The instructions do show you attaching the hose. So this does make me think, has this been out of the box and put back in the box? I'm not sure. Let me just check this filter actually while I'm here. I can open it, that's it. Hmm. Not sure. I don't think it's I don't think it's been used at all. I mean it does look a bit grey that filter, but I don't think it has been used. I think that is the colour of the filter. Yes, it's all that way all the way through, so no, I think we're okay. As long as it works when it's assembled. Right, we need to put the bag unit or the bagless unit onto the base. So there is a little yellow socket here which you plug this little plug into. So you need to plug that in first. Now let me see if there's any particular way you put it in. I'm not sure. I don't want to put it in the right way. Well, it will go in that way. Will it go in the other way as well? Oh, it does. I'll put it in the first way because that seemed easiest. So that's the, the plug into the little socket. Now I need to get both halves of the globe mechanism together. Don't force it. Hmm, I think I'll take the bagless unit off, make it easier for me. Because I can't see that that's going to go in. I don't want to force it. Ah, I know why. Yes, that's it. I think I haven't got that plug in properly. Whoops. Perhaps it does go the other way. Honestly, you'd think they'd do this at the factory for you. All right, that goes in now. Aha. Uh -huh. Come on. This, is, this isn't very good at all. I mean, I've assembled many vacuum cleaners in my day. Right, I'm not forcing this. I will consult the instruction manual again and uh, see if I'm doing anything wrong. Right, so the only thing I didn't do according to the instructions was to actually lower the neck part to this position. So now, is that going to make a difference? No. Or do... Oh, there we go. Seems to be okay. It's twisting, and that's locked upright. But anyway, this is Hoover's answer to the ball. Much smaller, because it doesn't obviously house the motor. But anyway, we'll just see if it's manoeuvrable with the twist and steer control. So that's the first thing. Now I need to connect to the hose, but like 
you, your hose, like me, sorry, your hose might be connected already, but in case it isn't, we will reconnect it now. Hmm, oh dear, which way do I put it in? Do I put it in that way, with the extra bit there, or do I turn it and put it in like that? It will go in that way. But it will also go in, possibly go in the other way. Let me just see if I can get it out. Turn it round. Mm -mm. No, it doesn't. So it must be that way. Is that in? I heard a click. Yep, that seems to be in position. Now we need to plug the handle end into the hole here on the cleaning head. Push it in like that. And then we've got all this hose, so that obviously needs to be clipped up out of the way. There's these green clips up the back of the machine. I'll just move that flex out of the way. And I just need to now clip the hose out of the way there. I think that kink will eventually sort itself. It's a bit, it's a bit kinked there. Anyway, so that's the hose connected. Now what's next? Shall I put the I'll put the bagless container back on. No, yes it is that way. It is that way, I think. I did look, I did look at the instructions before I got this machine. But obviously I didn't look at them properly. Doesn't seem right somehow. Right, it must go that way. Yes, it must do. Ah, there we go. A little bit fiddly. You just have to locate it. If you see this gubbins here at the bottom, that needs locating under the lip at the front there, where it says twist and steer. You need to locate that first, then push back until you hear a satisfying click. Now we've got the handle, we need to put that in. Press the handle release button down, there we go. And that's locked in, so now we've got the handle in place. Just need to put the dusting tool on the back. Now this is one thing that wasn't in the package that I was half expecting, and I don't know if it's Hoover or Argos's fault for misleading information, but I'm sure I read somewhere that it came with a hard floor head. And just shake the box. No. Let's check the box as well. I will go, I'm going to double check whichever website I saw that information on. And if it's Hoover, then I may be emailing Hoover and saying, I, I want my piece. Might be a mistake, but that was advertised. Right, here's the two hooks. Does that one move? The bottom one doesn't actually move. So you've just got one hook that moves. Don't want to force it. Now the bottom one seems static. You see, trouble is, winding the cord round, you can... It's hard to stop it from squashing the brushes and eventually distorting the brushes of the dusting tool. So hopefully we'll get all the flex on this without too much trouble. It is a very small machine. I mean there is a lot of um, this type of cleaner. There's, of course there's a Dyson do a compact upright and Vax do their air range. So there is a trend for smaller lightweight cleaners. And I'd say the Hoover Globe is part of that genre of machine. Well, I think that's everything assembled. Oh, no, no, 
One more thing to do. We've got the pet pet air remover that needs to be situated on the top here. And that looks like it just pushes in. That's it. So there we go. That's the Hoover Eco G twist and steer upright assembled. Right. Let me take you through the various features and functions of this cleaner now. So here we have the Hoover Eco G backless upright. Comfortable carry handle at the front there. And very, very light. I mean, it's not as light as say the Vax Air but you know it's quite easy to carry. The, the carry handle is at a nice height and it's comfortable so it's you know it's not too bad for weight so if weight is an issue and you want something compact that's quite good. I need two of these actually and then I could stand here one either side and do some lovely bicep curls you see build up a bit of muscle Yes, and that, doing that for a long period of time actually would, would fatigue your muscles enough. But then of course, once your muscle starts building, you'd, you'd be onto a bigger machine, you'd have to get something bigger and heavier. Until you finally work up, work up to an industrial sized vacuum. But anyway, for our purposes we don't need to do that. Here we go. So it's very light. I can swing that around to my heart's content. Better not though, because Knowing my luck, some part may fly off and break a window or something. But, oh, that is good. That's a good workout. Actually, I've had an idea for a new YouTube video. It's a workout with the vacuums. Da, da, da. Oops. Oh, dear. It couldn't take the pressure. Never mind. I'm sure in normal use, when you're carrying, it, carrying the machine, it'll be okay. So, here we have it with the handle. That's down in its storage position. In fact, I'll be able to show you a bit easier. There's a foot operated handle release. So this is a bit similar to the Hoover Slalom that came a few years ago. I do have um, an unboxing of the Slalom on my channel. So it does share some similarities, but the, one of the things the Slalom was a bit lacking in is the fact it wouldn't stay upright. The engage, engagement mechanism for keeping the machine upright, it was very tricky. But now there is actually a dedicated pedal there, which you press with your foot in order to recline. And while we've got it reclined, there's another button here that says handle release. So press that and we can pull the handle. All right, let's get it to this full extent. So. That would be its full extent for use. And it seems quite manoeuvrable when it's not switched on. And then you can have it if you're a bit shorter, you can have it a bit lower. So now it's locked in that position. And then if you're very, very short, you can even have it at that height. So you'd have to be very, very short to want it at that height. But that is the option for you and it might just go down one bit lower does it no so that's the lowest it goes so you can leave that if you're storing it in a lower cupboard you can store it in that position as well so it's good for short people and it's good for storage in a more compact cupboard so we've got the underside showing the agitator, obviously it's a single motored cleaner, uses a drive belt that will need to be replaced from time to time. And here we have the brushes. Let's give them a feel. Mmm, a bit soft. I like a nice stiff brush on my vacuum and those, although not as soft as Hoover's The One Cleaner, which were as soft as dusting brush bristles, they're not, say, as stiff as, uh, say, a SIBO X4. It's midway. But I do like a more stiff brush, so we'll have to see how it performs. And on edged cleaning, it's fairly close. There's a suction channel there. 
and this side it's about the same often with vacuum cleaners you get one side that's that's wider than the other but at least it's nicely balanced on this machine of course you get this part here where the belt is so you're not getting any brushing action there at all so like I showed you in the assembly you've got your four position height control short pile up to long pile and I believe Hoover say it's suitable for floors but you need to have it on the long pile setting for most houses with regular carpets I think short pile is probably the setting you'd have it on now let's have a closer look at the bagless assembly so here's the bin and a little handle that says bin release on it so assume we just lift up the handle and then we can remove the bin from the cleaner and then there's a bin empty switch here which being brand new I think when I do this it probably won't open the first time but we'll see uh, it goes like that some hoover cleaners you push up like that with this one you sort of push it like that toggle it but when I'm doing that nothing's happening as I was expecting because it's brand new it will will be a little bit stuck so I have to give it a helping hand there we go that's not uncommon with many bagless cleaners I've looked at when they're first new and especially when you're opening it with nothing in the container they won't drop down straight away there we go let's try it thirds a charm yes so now that's okay very small capacity when I'm looking at it that's the maximum fill line and what with all this veiny gubbins, I don't know what they call them and what they're for. See these bits here, prong things. It's not going to be a huge capacity, but obviously with a bagless machine, you can just empty that after each use. Or if you're really dirty, you might have to empty it after each room, certainly in the initial stages. Right, where's the filter? It's in here somewhere at the back, filter access open that up and here we have Hoover say it's a HEPA filter so first of all there's a cage with a little suction seal around it and then here is the foam filter again a bit, st a bit stiff I think I wonder if they've put that in the wrong way I think they probably have because there was a little again that's pretty common to see there's a little tag there which I assume you use that to remove it from the from the filter cage and that was face down so perhaps that's in the wrong way I'm not sure so that's a, a standard sort of foamy filter with a mesh either side that can be washed under running water squeezed out and left to dry for 24 hours before putting it back in the machine it's a multi-cyclonic cleaner but with this you can actually take it apart somewhat anyway if you need to give it a, a really good clean there's a little locking mechanism here again with um, a closed padlock and an open padlock so we just turn it round and we turn it all the way I wonder if I have to remove it all together I'll see yes I think you have to take that out so that comes out then Obviously, when this isn't new, this is going to be a bit of a messy job. So you might have to put your gloves on. And again, it's going to be stiff. There we are. Out it comes. So that's your cyclone assembly and your shroud. You can't really take any more of that apart. And really, Hoover, you could Hoover say to clean that with a, you know, with a say dusting brush or wipe it with a damp cloth but you're not supposed to submerge this in water but um, there you have it at least you have a bit more access to that than some cleaners and of course you've got a bit more access to the bin you can give that a wipe out again I wouldn't really put that in water either because there is a bleed valve again it's a very common thing to have if you quite see it at the top there 
it's a little bleed valve if the suction becomes blocked or you don't empty the cleaner that will operate in order to help safeguard the motor to keep air, air flowing through the machine so that's that so we need to try and put this back in the right position now and because it's shaped a particular way well it's fairly easy to see which way it goes there we go uh, oops that's it that's in position now we just need to screw on that would be nice because these cyclones on most bagless vacuums nearly all of them they do clog up with dust over a period of time so it would be nice if you could further take them apart and give them a good wash you know in hot soapy water but no manufacturer to my knowledge so far has given you the option but that hoover have gone halfway to allowing you to to give it a good clean let's close the bin pop the filter back so there's the cage there's the filter I'm assuming that is the way I think it was put in in the wrong wrong way because that yes it was actually now I, now I see it you see it was in the wrong way you can see there's only one way it goes can you just make out that little sort of worm oblong shape there's a corresponding oblong cut out on the filter so oh no it isn't the wrong way I do apologize to those people in the Hoover factory in China if they can understand what I'm saying no that is right that is the way it was fitted because then you take the whole thing out what happened when I took it out this came out first without the filter so hopefully that will come out in one piece then you use that little tag to take the filter out of the cage there anyway it's back in and now we need to locate it this way down whoops no, you don't need, to, you don't need to throw it. Although maybe I will be wanting to throw it after I've used it. Who knows? Right, goes on that way after you've given it a good clean, and it's dry. So that's it, really. Whoop! <laughs> Dear me, got the case of the dropsies today. I don't want to be dropping that because it might shatter into tiny little pieces, and I wouldn't be happy. I've not even used it. We've got a sticker nicely hidden away so it doesn't obscure the beauty of the appliance. Uh, a sticker here with a phone number and a website, Hoover's website, where you can buy original Hoover consumable spares. Here's your rating plate. Hoover, now I've never seen that before. Hoover still are in Merthyr Tidfil. I didn't know that. Serial number, I don't know how I can date it from this. Anyway, it's 391-00379, and there's 1410 there. And then some more numbers, 0223. Made in, guess, can you guess where this is made? Is it made, is it made in Camberslang, Scotland? Is it made in Portugal, even? No, where do you think? Well, it's made in that very famous country, because nearly everything I seem to buy has this on. It's made in PRC. Yes, the People's Republic of China. Its type is VU03. Possibly the V stands for vacuum, the U for upright, and I'm not sure what the O3 stands for. Hoover Limited, Merthyr, CF484 TWUK. So, they probably still have their office, head office in Merthyr, but probably not where they used to have the washing machine factory. It's probably just... I don't know, a porter cabin in Merthyr Tidfil now, employing about three people, I'm not sure. But in their heyday, of course, Hoover employed thousands in the UK manufacturing their appliances. Sadly, alas, not anymore. Ah, oh, that is good, because I did find it was a bit tricky. There was a bin refit instruction on here. A lot of people don't bother looking at the instructions, so Hoover have put the instruction there. There's also a helpline it's rather ugly there I think I will move that shall I move it now or later later because I think it's going to leave a sticky mark but if I can take that out I'm going to stick that somewhere in here not that I'll need to ring them I don't think but there's a Hoover helpline there should you need any help 
regarding your appliance. I'm sure the people at the Hoover call centre won't appreciate you phoning up asking for help with anything else. You never know, you might be lucky. So, we can put the bin back in now. So locate it, so it's quite a quite an angle you have to put it in initially and then push it back. Little bit of curly, well I don't know what you call that, filigree or something, some sort of little detail. It looks a bit retro, doesn't it? For any of you who know what retro is, either side. You'd expect to see that sort of thing on, a, on an old Hoover from the 50s or 60s, wouldn't you? And you've got the same sort of branding there, Eco G, Ultra Maneuverable. That's a very difficult word to spell. That's how you spell it, if you want to know. And we've got the other filter, which I did have a look at, didn't I, on the unboxing. Again, you can wash that under running water and leave it to dry at least overnight and only refit it when it's bone dry. It does come out of the debris. I'm not going to try. I assume it does. Actually, it might not. No, it looks like it's... That's No, that's ridiculous. It's actually... No, it's stuck in. So the filter is actually stuck into that, so you'd wash the whole thing. So if you do want to replace the filter, it looks like you have to replace all that. But with care, as long as you don't wash it in hot, hot water with harsh detergent, you should be alright. Just rinse it like Hoover say. But that's your final exhaust filter. So basically, if the machine hasn't filtered out all the dust... Well, no, yes, it will come through the motor actually. But that, will, that mainly is to stop carbon dust from exiting the machine. It will go black and the black is the carbon dust from the motor, it's not dust from your home. So on the back, well here's the on-off switch anyway. Just, oh, where is it? There it is. On-off. And the cord at the back, and like I discovered earlier, only one of the hooks turns, so you turn the top hook down and you release the whole lot of cord in one go. And then you've got a little clip just here at the top, which to keep the cord, because it's fairly low down on the machine, or sort of halfway down, to keep that out of the way, you clip it to the handle. But first, we'd adjust the handle upwards. Whoops, not all that way, that's it. Then, I can just show you. I really need someone to do my camera work for me. There we go. So that keeps it clipped up out of the way and hold Hold the flex with one hand as well to keep it free of the cleaner because you don't want to be running over the cord. And there we go, it does seem quite good until I switch it on. Now to access the tools, put it in the upright position, we'll take the cord hook off, press the handle release, so now we've got the handle which forms the extension tube and then we take this handle from the base of the cleaner and then we can just free the hose like that. Again it looks looks very short but it is very very stretchable. In the old days Hoover had a double stretch hose the Hoover Flex hose that stretched to twice its length. Well this is a bit more than twice and it's just if you look at my fingers there now that's probably about four times stretch so it is designed to actually reach right up your stairs and naturally the full review will show me, hopefully, reaching easily up the stairs with this cleaner. You can connect all your tools directly to this handle if you want to. So we've got the pet turbo brush here, so you can fit that directly on. So that's good if you want to be cleaning, say, inside your car in a tighter space you can fit it directly on. But it will also fit on the end of your tube as well. If, you've, if you don't want to bend down, you can do your upholstery and do your stairs with it fitted on that. That goes back in there. And again, we've got your dusting tool, which just like the turbo brush, you can fit it to the end 
of your extension wand there so you can do high up places but of course it will have naturally just like the other tool fit directly to the hand grip there and then if I reach behind me we've got the multi-tool which again you can fit it directly to this it gives you quite a, a good reach like that but then you can go like that and you've got even further. So I'm wondering, I can't see any reason why not, can you fit the multi-tool to this? Ah, oh, you can't. Hmm. Now that's a bit silly really. You can fit everything else to this but not the multi-tool. I mean yes, it's got a quite a good reach but if you've got very high ceilings it might have been an advantage to be able to fit that to that so then you have even more reach you know, if you live in a Victorian house, an older property that's got high ceilings, that would have been a, a useful little thing to do, but sadly, alas, doesn't do that. So, here we have the handle and tube, and we've got this little cap. Another little diagram on there, if you can just about see that, showing you what to do. Open that up. Push the hose into there. So now you use the handle that you'd normally use when you're vacuuming your carpets. You can use it for your above floor work as well. So it's quite a nice design. I'm, um, you know, and it looks to me to be an original Hoover design because some Hoover cleaners are actually not designed by the Hoover designers because I've seen certain models actually branded as a different make in other countries. So I think this is probably one of Hoover's designs. And it's not too bad. It's got some nice little features. It's all very well having nice design features as long as they actually work when you're cleaning your home. So I think that's I've shown you everything about the cleaner. So the next video I do regarding the Hoover Eco G globe will be a full demonstration and my further thoughts on this little Hoover vacuum. Thanks for watching and if you liked the video subscribe if you want to and then you'll be updated when I do my latest upload of this vacuum cleaner.